So this is a normal PS4 controller. I haven't modified this one at all. So let me show you what the problem is here. I'll start a game. Um, you can tell by the way the gun is angled. When the gun is up, I'm not running. But if I were to click this button, so these actually click like that. If I were to run and then click it, now you can see the gun goes down and I go fast. The problem is that I can only go fast for a few seconds and then it automatically goes slow again. And that requires me to click the button again, click it, and I have to just, all day if I want to run, I have to keep clicking this button. And it's so frustrating. Um, I'm not actually trying to play, by the way. So, okay, so I'm, I'm running, and the first burst probably lasts five or six seconds, and then it starts to fail, and I have to just keep clicking it. And the frustrating thing is that it doesn't respond right away. It takes a little bit of time you have to click it multiple times. So throughout the day, I'm clicking this button hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, and it starts to get really sore with my thumb. It's not a very easy button to press. All right, so this is my modified controller. It doesn't look any different than a regular PS4 controller, except when I was in there, I decreased the intensity of the slight bar, because it was pretty frustrating uh, when it was getting in the TV. But now, instead of clicking this button to run, clicking it toggles an auto run feature. When auto run is enabled, it's really like someone's in there just clicking this button five times a second. So all I have to do is move forward, and you can see by the position of the gun, it's uh, automatically running. And then when it runs out of steam, this is where it would normally stop and require me to click again, it automatically keeps clicking. So now I'm running in little bursts as if I were sitting there mashing the run button, which over a long period of time, you can imagine, gets pretty frustrating. Um, all the other features work. I can aim and everything. Um, Yeah, I, <laughs> I can run fast with this modification, but it doesn't make me actually better at the game. Um, so okay, let's uh, show you how it turns on and off. So just by clicking it, I can go back to the normal run behavior, like you see there. And by clicking it again, now we have re-enabled the automatic run feature. So let's take a look inside this controller and see how I actually achieve this. So this is a game which has that auto run functionality built in. This is Titanfall 2 for PS4, and if we go into the options, we can look in the settings screen. Under controls, sprint can either be manual, where you have to click this button each time you want to run, or auto sprint. If it's an auto sprint, it just automatically starts running when you move forward, and then it slows down if you want to do something like aiming. Uh, so this is the type of functionality that I want to mimic in the Call of Duty game. Um, understandably, the Call of Duty World War II game is probably supposed to be a slower paced game than Titanfall. I'm sure that they don't intend the gameplay style to be quite, quite as fast paced, but after playing a game like this for so long, I'm so used to trying to run continuously that I find myself just mashing that run button all the time. So I'm going to try to imp implement this type of feature into a controller by sticking a microchip in here to have it automatically sprint whenever I move forward. So let's give it a shot and see how it goes. So I came up with a really simple microchip solution that we can stick entirely inside the controller so that if you just click it once, it'll keep clicking it for you and then to disable it, you just click it again. Um, so to do this, I opened up the controller. You can do that just by taking out these four screws. And when you open it up, this is what you get inside. And I'll go ahead and take this apart. Um, got a battery here open that up. So the battery just comes right out and then there's a little plastic piece which takes some pressure but you can pull it straight out and this little ribbon cable you can pull straight out by the blue tab and here is the circuit board and I didn't need to take this apart any more than this uh, just from here you can see what I did um, let's take a look at the front. So when you click here you can hear that tactile switch. Um, it's a joystick on top of a tactile switch, and there are lots of good teardown photos online, so you can get an idea of what the other side of this board looks like. But I didn't even have to lift it out. I just soldered three wires to these three points here. And again, high quality photos will be on my website, so take a look in the video description for that. Um, and I soldered those three wires over here to a microcontroller that I super glued to the circuit board. And this little area here, I can put a lot of electronics if I want to, because that's mostly empty space. That's, you know, 
that's kind of where this is. And you can tell from here that's mostly empty space. Uh, the motor that causes the shock, like the shaking feature, is down here, but all of this is available to cram in whatever I want. Um, but I was able to do it all with a single 8-pin microcontroller. This is an Atmel ATtiny85, and it's an 8-bit microcontroller, and it doesn't need any external components. I grab 5 volts power from this point, and then the way this click works is when you sense this middle wire here, it's normally ground, but when you click it down, it's 5 volts. Um, and actually, I oversimplified it. It's not really ground. It's a lower voltage, and it's not really 5 volts. It's kind of whatever the battery is. It's about 3 volts. Um, and there's, I guess, one more nuance I should talk about. It doesn't go all the way to ground when you click it. There is some charge, or there's some uh, voltage still on that wire. So I can't use the digital input of the microcontroller just to sense it with a pin read, I have to actually use the analog to digital converter built into the microcontroller. But I can do an ADC read and compare the, vol the voltage to a known amount, and I can have a pretty good idea of whether or not it's being pressed. And that button sensing, the voltage sensing, isn't necessary for actually applying the button presses. It's necessary for the microchip to be able to sense when I'm trying to turn it on and turn it off. Um, so yeah, that's what that wire is, and the other one's ground. So just since we have plus voltage and ground, that's enough to power the microcontroller. And then that third pin does both the automatic button pressing, and between the button presses, it senses whether or not I'm pressing it myself. This is the controller all opened up, and I have wires attached to the microcontroller so I can program it. So I'm using a USB tiny ISP, really inexpensive, USB programmer to help me program the little chip that's buried in there. And to actually do the programming, let's see, uh, we have the actual program code which lives here. I'll show it on my website. And then I can click this programming batch file. And let's try that again. There you go, it programs the microchip. And now the microchip is running code. So we'll take a look at the oscilloscope. That shows the button presses. And when I push the, actually now that it's working, I can un unplug the programmer. So let's just take all these pins off. We get a little bit better visibility of what's going on inside. Um, the oscilloscope is probing the output pin. This might be hard to get a ground pin in there. Okay, cool. So now, if I were to raise this up, I can click this button. And when I do, I'll show you what it does on the oscilloscope. Let's take a closer look here. So now it's off, but I'll click it. And it starts firing. Okay, with a little bit of trial and error, I was able to figure out what I needed to do. Um, I just wasn't clicking the button fast enough. So if I do a fast click, it can turn it off. And then if I do another fast click, it'll turn it on. If I let it wait too long, it won't activate the toggle mode. So I'll just keep that in mind when I actually go to use this. It's got to be a pretty fast hit. But I can reliably turn it on and off just by clicking that uh, L3 button. So I'll reassemble this, and then we'll test it out on an actual game. Um, oh yeah, there's something else I did while I had this open. I know I'm not alone in hating the fact that these PS4 controllers have a really bright blue light that turns on, and the blue light is just continuously coming out the back. Um, first of all, it seems like a waste of battery, but that's kind of neither here nor there. It's a, I'm sure it's a very low current LED. Uh, the bigger problem is that if you have a blue light shining out the back, it can reflect if you have a glossy TV, which I, which I do. So if you hold your controller low and you're at the right angle facing your TV, it'll reflect back in your face, and that's just such a dumb design. Um, if you open this up, this thing has a light pipe, which goes here, so it takes the light from this LED and it puts it through this diffuser. I just took the light pipe out, and then 
with it out, this doesn't really stay in place very well, so I just added a couple dots of super glue. But that's enough to uh, allow me to still use the light so I can tell if it's on or charging or not. But it's way dimmer and it probably won't cause as much of a problem. Uh, when reassembling it, don't forget to put that back where it goes. This is kind of tight in here. Okay. So I think Reset and the people who open these up a lot are probably just screaming at me. I have a, I have a really hard time getting these back together cleanly. Actually that did okay. Alright, so now we're back together. Um, shoot, I've got my screws here, I'll go ahead and put those in. And then we can give it a try. So I'll mention again, for whatever reason, my thumbs have never gotten tired running in a game before. I've played previous versions of Call of Duty which has a similar uh, type of run style and it doesn't bother me. I don't know why this particular beta is really getting to me. I think it's because when you click that L3 button you only run for a few seconds instead of several more seconds. So if I were to sit there and watch myself play and count how many times I'm clicking that button I've got to be clicking that button hundreds of times and I'm just I don't want to do that. <laughs> so all right. Uh, everything feels pretty good. Actually, let's turn it on and it's starting up and you can see that blue light is way dimmer than it was before, which is awesome. So let's give it a try with an actual game and see if it performs like we expect it to.